Hi everyone and welcome to lesson four. It is Thursday of week two. So well done for getting this far. We're going to finish off our week with our last lesson on capacity. So before we start, let's do our mass warm up activities. You can use a whiteboard and a marker or a piece of paper and a pencil. <clears throat> okay, so today's date. Now what you need to do here is fill in the gaps. You can see that there's some big rectangles and that's where you need to write. So I'd like you to write everything that is on this slide. Now here we are, I'm going to read it to you. Today, is and you need to tell me what the day is the what date is it of which month and then in this one of which year and then the season is and now do you know which season it is remember we have summer autumn winter and spring and i'll give you a clue it's the season when there's lots of flowers coming out and it's starting to get warmer. Okay, so pause the video, fill in the details and then come back and we'll do it together. All right, let's take a look. Today is Thursday, the 14th of October 2021 or 2021. The season is Spring, well done everyone. I absolutely love spring when it's starting to get warmer and it's so close to summer. Okay, so what you need to do here is show me half. How many ways can you show half? Now this is just an example. Here I have half of a shape, so you will need to choose a shape and then you can put a line right down the middle to show half. Half of a number, here I have half of four is two, because two plus two is four. If I have four here and I take away one, two, I'm left with two. Half of an object, so here I have an iPad or a phone, and then here half of a collection. So here I have six hamburgers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a circle around half of them. And that is three. Half of six is three. And three plus three is six. So now it's your turn to do that on a piece of paper that you have at home. And you can fill it in here. This is what it could look like. Half of a shape, half of a number, half of an object, and then half of the collection. So you will need to pause the video and complete this activity. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, our last um, warm up activity is a word problem. Now my word problem today is, at the zoo, there were 12 zebras and 14 giraffes, so 12 zebras and 14 giraffes. How many all together? And you will need to show your working out. So how did you work this one out today? Now you might like to draw a picture. You don't need to draw zebras and giraffes because sometimes they can be a little bit tricky. You might like to use another object. So pause the video, solve this problem and then come back and we'll do it together. Okay, so let's have a look. At the zoo, there were 12 zebras. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 12 circles and that's going to represent my zebras. So you can count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So there are my 12 zebras. Plus, because remember we're combining them, we're figuring out how many all together, 14 giraffes. Okay, so now I'm going to count out 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now I have my picture. This is my working out. I'm showing you how I'm working it out. Now there are two options how we can add them together. We could either count them all up. We could count up all of these circles and all of these rectangles because they're representing our zebras and our giraffes. Or we could put the bigger number in our head, which is 14, and we could add on 12. Or you could put 12 in your head and count on 14. So today, I'm going to put the bigger number in my head because that means I don't have to count as high up. So I'm going to put 14 in my head and I remember that we need to add on 12. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and 26. And we can always double check that by counting them all up. So let's do that as well. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and twenty-six. Fantastic. So my answer is twenty-six. At the zoo, there were 12 zebras and 14 giraffes, and altogether, there were 26. All right, well done, everyone. Okay, let's get started. Our learning intention today is that we are learning to understand that containers of different shapes can have the same capacity. Our success criteria, I can measure and compare the capacity of two containers, and I understand that containers of different shapes and sizes can have the same capacity. So let's take a look at what we're doing today and what this all means, how we're going to get there. Remember, what is capacity? Capacity means how much something can hold. Measuring capacity at home. So this is our activity today. What you'll need to do is find a short, wide container and a long, thin container and draw them on a piece of paper. You will need to say which container do you think will hold the most water. So again, we're estimating and we're having a sensible guess. Then we're going to see how many cups of water it takes to fill each container to see if you were correct. And then we're going to state which container holds the most water once we have measured it. So let's take a look. So here's an example. This is the one I did at home. So my example will be different to yours because you might have different containers at home. So here are two containers that I found in my home. I have my short, wide container and I have my long and thin container. So these are my drawings. Here I have drawn and labelled my two containers. So you can see here I have container one and then I've written short and wide so I know. Container two and then I have written long and thin. Okay, so number one, which container do you think will hold the most water? Now you can see here where I have drawn and labelled my objects, I've also written a statement and my statement says, I think the long and thin container will hold the most water because it is taller. Now I think that because of the long and thin container, it is taller and it's also a little bit bigger. So I think it's going to have a larger capacity, which means it's going to hold more water. So on the next slide, you can take a look at how I measured this. Okay, so let's take a look together. So number two, see how many cups of water it takes to fill each container to see if you are correct. So let's take a look. Now remember, I think 
that the long and thin container will have a larger capacity and hold more water. Okay, let's now see which container holds the most water. I have my short and wide container and my long and thin container. And here you can see that I have my label drawing. I have container one, short and wide, container two, long and thin. And my answer to question one of which container do you think will hold the most water is that I think the long and thin container will hold the most water because it is taller. Okay, so let's see if I'm correct. I've got lots of cups of water here, as you can see behind. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, just to be sure. To help me when I'm counting how many cups of water fill the container. So let's start with container one. Let's see how many cups of water it holds. I'm going to do it very carefully. Okay. There's one cup of water. And as you can see, I've still got a little bit more room. And we're going to get two, not quite two cups. So here you can see I've got half left. So together, my short and my container holds one cup of water and then another half a cup of water. So one and a half cups. So I'm going to put that one to the side. So now let's do container two, which is my long and thin container. And remember, I think that this one's going to hold the most water. So let's take a look. All right. One cup of water. <gasps> two cups of water. And is it going to be three? Four? Not quite three. You can see here that it's nearly empty because halfway is here, it's nearly empty. So it's almost three cups of water. So my long thin container has the larger capacity. Now, when you do this activity at home, you might have a bigger short and wide container or a smaller long and thin. So all of our answers are going to be different. We can't wait to see what you've come up with. Okay, so what you could see and what I discovered is that the long and thin container holds the most water. And in fact, I was correct because I estimated that, yes, it would hold more water because it is taller. Okay, so now I have a challenge for you. Once you've completed the activity, if you would like to, you can find two containers of different shapes and sizes that are the same capacity. This means that they will hold the same amount of water. So it might be a little bit of trial and error. You'll need your cups of water and you might need to be pouring them into different containers to see which ones are the same capacity, which means which ones are holding the same amount of water. Once you've discovered this, you can draw a picture and label it and submit it to your week two completed work document. Okay, so let's quickly reflect on what we've just learned. And remember our learning intention was that we are learning to understand that containers of different shapes can have the same capacity. So the first one of our success criteria was that I can measure and compare the capacity of two containers. Now, that's what we did when we were figuring out if a short and wide container or a long and thin container, which one had the larger capacity and would hold more water. So we were comparing two different containers. Now, the second success criteria was that I understand that containers of different shapes and sizes can have the same capacity. Now you completed this with your challenge. Now, like I said before, you may have done a little bit of trial and error. You would need to be filling lots of different containers with cups of water to see which ones had the same capacity. And we understand that containers might look different. We could have long ones, skinny ones, big ones, wide ones, but sometimes even though they look different, 
they can hold the same amount of water, which means they're the same capacity. So I'm going to give ourselves a big tick for both of these and you've done such a great job this week, boys and girls, and I'm extremely proud of you. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I'll see you next time.